By now, we have all heard the tragic news of the snowbird captain Jennifer Casey's death as her plane crashed in Kamloops, B.C. on Sunday, May 17th. Just weeks before Captain Casey's untimely death, another pilot, 40-year-old Joyce Lynn, died minutes after taking off in her small plane set to deliver COVID-19 rapid test kits and school supplies to a remote village in Indonesia where she served as a missionary. Joining us to share more about Joyce's life is CEO of Mission Aviation Fellowship, the organization Joyce worked for, David Holston. Thank you so much for joining us today, David. Thank you, Maggie. Good to be with you. Well, first of all, we just want to um, offer our condolences at the death and loss of uh, Joyce. Uh, I know a beloved employee and just a team member for uh, Mission Aviation Fellowship. Well, we're grateful for that. She was a well-loved member of our MAF family. It's been a a difficult week for us, uh, losing Joyce. It's, uh, we've been blessed. It's been 23 years since we had experienced a fatal accident mm. in MAF. And so it was jarring for us. It was shocking, you know, for us on a number of levels. But, uh, but we, we continue to move forward with hope. So we're grateful for that as well. Yeah. Can you take us back to May 12th? What exactly happened that day? Well, the accident, of course, is still under investigation. We're actually in the early stages of that. Uh, really, even in just the last 12 hours, they were able to retrieve the aircraft from the lake mm -hmm. that uh, it had descended to. But uh, Joyce was taking off on her first flight of the day to a small village in the mountains of the Indonesian province of Papua. Uh, this is an area that uh, she would have flown about an hour and 10 minutes to get to it over a lot of jungle and, and mountains. Shortly after her takeoff, uh, the weather was good. Uh, she departed and just about a minute or two after that departure, she did radio a distress call. And that was really all we heard from her in terms of communication. Uh, the airplane was not that high above the ground, maybe only a thousand feet or so. Mm -hmm. and so. Uh, it began a descent. There's a large lake that's right there by the airport that she departed from. And a couple of hours after we received that call, the aircraft was located by a local search and rescue unit. And uh, sadly, Joyce had, had not survived that accident. Her body was recovered from the wreckage. And from what I'm hearing about Joyce, she was an amazing woman, a woman of faith and just loved the people of Indonesia and loved what she did. That's exactly right. It's interesting, you know, as you go through something like this, it, it uh, unveils different layers of her life. There were mm -hmm. things that we had not been aware of in terms of her accomplishments and, and parts of her education. She really was a remarkable woman. Uh, Joyce went to uh, MIT, which is one of the, you know, one of the premier technology sort of schools, engineering schools here in the U.S. And uh, then she went to a theological seminary. She served in the U.S. Air Force in uh, IT cybersecurity, and in all of these places, she was very successful. She received various accolades. Uh, she was very active in her church. She connected with all sorts of people in her church, with children, with the youth, and was much loved by many people. She joined us after really a ten-year journey that she had been on. Uh, where the initial interest in, in serving with MAF was sparked during an, an internship she did about 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And it was at that point that she thought, you know, I could bring my love of aviation together with my love of information technology, and I could serve people with these gifts and these talents that I've been blessed with. And that's exactly what she did. Mm -hmm. And so uh, she joined us about three years ago. And after initial year of preparation, she went on over to Indonesia, where she went through another year of language training, and then actually has been in Papua for about the last year. Now, I mean, being a pilot, you know that every day when you step into that plane, you could not return. I mean, it's just an unfortunate reality of just being a pilot. And I did read uh, an account from a friend that said that Joyce knew of that risk that she took every single day, but she also knew that she was doing what God wanted her to do. Well, that's exactly right. And, and you know, 
it's important to remind ourselves that in almost any line of work, something bad could happen, Absolutely. right? And of course, yeah. aviation is such that it, there, there tends to be a lot of recognition around an accident. It, it's usually well known by people. And it, it is important that if you're doing this line of work and the sort of flying that MAF does by its nature is in remote parts of the world, it go, we fly in and out of pretty challenging airstrips just to simply land on it requires a lot of specialized training. Mm -hmm. And everybody who is involved in our work, they do need to wrestle with that question of, is this worth it? Is mm -hmm. this worth it if it costs me my life? And it's, we encourage our families to actually have those conversations with each other, to have conversations with their extended family so that everybody understands, even though it's highly unlikely, it is possible. And as you mentioned, we actually, uh, a conversation was shared with us that a, a friend of Joyce had, had had with her, actually curated this conversation where they had this specific uh, dialogue of, wow, this is something that you could actually die doing. And, and Joyce somewhat humorously responded and said, yeah, you know, it, it could, I guess, but I, I'm at peace with that. If I were to lose my life doing this, I am doing something that I want to do and that God has called me to do, and I'm at peace with that. So we are so thankful that we actually can look at that conversation that she had. That's been a source of comfort for her family and many of us. Joyce was at peace with the risk that came with this sort of work. Tell us about these remote villages that Joyce was serving and the fact that she was delivering these important COVID-19 tests. Uh, and school supplies in the midst of this. Tell us about that need. So uh, this part of the world uh, where I had, I had the privilege of serving in Indonesia for 17 years as an MAF pilot. And so I'm very familiar with this, uh, the specific place where Joyce was flying. I, I flew the, that accident aircraft for hundreds of hours. I went into that village dozens of times carrying the same sort of things that, that she was involved carrying. I used to tell people the airplane is like a time machine in Papua. You get into the airplane in this somewhat modern city, and after an hour, you get out into a primitive village, mm. and you're in a place where there isn't electricity. There are just small round huts sometimes, um, very minimal supplies. Almost everything that they cannot get from the jungle or they can't grow in their garden uh, is going to have to be brought in on something like an airplane. So the, the remoteness is really hard for people to uh, imagine. Though I think a lot of folks in Canada would appreciate it when you start thinking of remote uh, villages that are, that are in the northern part of, of the country. So think of that sort of context. And the, the village that Joyce was flying into, we have been serving in Indonesia for over 50 years. I mean, MAF has had a, a presence in that location for decades. And there's a, there's a school that's been developed in the last uh, five or six years, beautiful uh, school that is being used to educate these Papuan children with a Christian worldview, actually. There's teachers that have come in from the, the large capital city of Jakarta, and they're pouring their lives into these children to educate them. But all of the supplies for that school come in on MAF airplanes. So their food, the books, uh, uniforms of kids are going to wear those. The teachers are coming in and out for uh, holiday, they would go on our MAF airplane. And that is the flight that Joyce was doing on her, on her particular day. In addition, there's a medical clinic there. And so the COVID rapid test kit, she had uh, around uh, 45 kilos of those on board. Uh, she was flying that into the, 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 the clinic there. So it was a mixed load of medical supplies as well as supplies for that school. And the only way they get it is on an MAF airplane. Wow, important work that hopefully will continue, I'm assuming, um, in light of Joyce losing her life. That's right. In fact, we just had a, a conversation this morning with our crisis management team, and the, we're, we're trying to be very careful and deliberate mm -hmm. when we return to operations uh, in that location because we want our team to uh, go through the grieving process in a healthy way. Of course, the investigation's going on. We're going to seek to learn everything we can from that. Uh, but we know that could be months before we know all that information. 
and they are already receiving requests from other locations, when can you fly again? Because we need the test kits here. And so actually the very next flight that's going to take place in Papua uh, within about two days is another flight with rapid test kits going into a different village. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's an interesting time to be serving. The needs are profound. We're, we never have the capacity to meet all of them. And yet we're trying to, to walk very carefully and deliberately in light of, of everything that's just happened. Such important work that MAF does. Thank you again, David, for sharing about Joyce and also the important work that you continue to do, especially in her memory. I think if anything I've learned from Joyce's life is that she would want the mission to continue. Absolutely. And um, if I think what we've experienced in our, organ <clears throat> excuse me, in our organization is that when somebody loses their life doing this sort of work, it adds that much more weight to the importance of it. And Joyce believed what she was doing was incredibly important, and it was a source of joy for her to do it. Mm -hmm. And so we celebrate that. That's one of the things that, that helps to you know, move us out of this time of grief and loss and to have hope for the future. So we are throwing ourselves into the work that we're doing. We are convinced it is good and needed. We want to do it with excellence, but we are committed to continue to do it. Thank you again for your time today. Thank you, Maggie. Hey, everyone. Thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing. And let us know what you think about today's topic right there in the comments.